Hello, my friends. Welcome once again to Faith Walk 101. We are so glad <laughs> that you could join us. Just how important is your soul? Do you know? In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28, the Bible says, do not, this is what Jesus says, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body. Don't be afraid. We seem to scramble. It's all about our lives and uh, our lives are so precious. Yes, they are. But Jesus says, don't be afraid of those that can just kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. How important is your soul? And he goes on to say, rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. We don't like to hear that too much. He said, that's the ones that you need to fear. The worst that anyone can do to you, the worst that anyone could ever try to do to you is nothing compared to the wrath of God that will come on those who are rebellious against him. Let me repeat that. There's nothing that anyone can do to you, nothing that is going to be compared to the wrath of God that's going to come on those who are rebellious against him, who are rebellious against God's way. So exactly what is my soul? Your soul is where all your thinking is. It's up here. Your soul is where, your, where you reason. It's what, how you make your decisions. It's what you do. Before you do anything, your soul, your thinking tells you the direction to go. It makes those choices. It makes the choices according to your thought life. And that's why the Bible tells us we ought to take every thought captive. That's why the Bible tells us we ought to have the mind of Christ. Because your soul, your thought life, directs your life. It makes your choices according to the things that's going on inside of your head. And what's going on inside of your head is what you believe. It's your attitudes. It's your feelings, your emotions. It's the memories that you have in the past. They're all coming from your heart and that's uh, in your soul. Now, the Bible tells us that uh, we're to guard our heart because once we <clears throat> come to Christ, the Spirit of God is put into our hearts and our heart is speaking to our mind. But what happens if, you, uh, if the Spirit of God is not in you then you're full of yourself and yourself is speaking to your soul. And your, that's where your thinking and your, uh, your actions, your behavior, the, your decisions are coming from your soul, but it's in your heart. It's coming out of your heart. Solomon says the issues of life come from the heart. So what you believe, your attitudes and feelings, your emotions, memories, all are coming out of your heart. And if your heart, if you're not, don't have the spirit of God inside of you and you're filled with yourself, then yourself is speaking to your soul. And, you, and your Bible tells us that the only thing you're going to get out of this world with is your soul. And so we want to give our hearts to Jesus Christ. Let him fill us with his spirit. So now we have a new attitude. Uh, we have a new heart that's been put inside of us. So if you're in Christ, then you have the spirit that now lives inside of you. And that spirit is the Holy Spirit. Now, here's the thing about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is only going to speak truth from the Word of God. And so, as we study the Word of God, as we rightly divide the truth, as we fellowship with one another, the Holy Spirit is going to speak to the soul, our, the, the, our thinking, our thought life, our attitudes, and the Holy Spirit is going to speak to our mind and we're going to respond to the Spirit by behaving uh, by the leading of the Spirit that's inside of us. Uh, that's so important to remember. So our soul is the things that we think about, our thought life. And if we're, if, uh, if we're filled with ourself, then all of our instructions is coming from the world. Well, why did I say that? It's because um, sin has separated us from the world. But when you come to Christ, you're no longer in sin. You've been redeemed. He's bought us with a price. But if you have not come to Christ, 
then you are still in that sinful state. You're operating uh, in a sinful manner. The only thing that can save you is our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's when he puts his spirit inside of our heart to lead us and guide us. And so the soul is so important. It's the only thing that you're going to get out of this world, with, my friends. So if you're not in Christ, then you are full of yourself. But those who are in Christ, then the Holy Spirit has been put inside of us. Now we have to grow. And then when that growth takes place as we study his word. Soul patrol, my friends. <laughs> Soul patrol. But first, before we can patrol anyone's soul, we have to examine ourselves. We have to examine ourselves first. Examine yourself and see uh, how your soul is responding. Are you in Christ? Have you accepted him? Has he uh, put his deposit, his spirit inside of you? Are you still full of self? Now, even when God puts his spirit inside of us, we have to grow. And uh, that growth takes place when we fellowship and we study his word. If we don't grow and uh, we still have the spirit inside of us, uh, but when we don't grow and we still respond in a sinful nature, a sinful manner, then what that does, it grieves the spirit because the spirit of God is inside of us. And the spirit of God wants us to be led by the Holy Spirit, by God's Spirit, uh, to manifest our behavior uh, from the Spirit speaking in our lives to our soul. The soul is very important. How important is it? Jesus says, don't be afraid of what man can do to your body. He says, what you need to fear is what he can do to your soul. What can, uh, and that is uh, the life that we live while we're here. But we're not even fearing man for what he can do to it. It's the fear, the, the respect, the reverence to, to God because God is the only one that will bring final judgment on us. And he is the only one that can cast us uh, into the eternal damnation for rebelling against him. He destroys, the Bible says, he can destroy both soul and body. And that's the one that we want to uh, be afraid of. When I say afraid of fear, I'm talking about having a reverence, respect for God. And that's what the Bible tells us. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And it's not a fear that we, um, in, in such a way that we're afraid uh, that God is going to punish us. It's a reverence. It's a respect. It's an honor to him, my friends. This is so important. Don't fear what man can do to you. But it's the wrath of God that comes on only on those who are rebellious against him. He's going to destroy that in hell. Continue to join us on Faith Walk 101. We're going to talk more about how we're going to be led by this spirit.